An army of frigates, my bad. <laughs> okay, so. Um, yes. Uh, the Dutch were very similar to the English in the way that they worked and didn't actually trade with Korea. They did trade with Japan, though. Um, actually, Korea conquered, like, there's a lot of, like, different divergencies in the... I, in I believe life. this is yes, the longest video yes. so far. The Dutch far. traded with the Japanese in real life, yes. Which gave them a lot of silk and other so items, salty. like rice. Um, but, not rice, they, I mean, they brought rice to Europe in some ways. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But, um, the Dutch East India Company, uh, the building of which I've been to, it's really cool, you should go sometime, ma'am. We got seven minutes. the Dutch minutes. Maritime Museum now. Um, is they were like for instance um, Indonesia is still technically a Dutch province even though it's not like it's like in Australia how it's a Commonwealth country but it's not actually yeah don't tell the Indonesians that they will tell yeah the they will yeah they will, <laughs> they will. They will. They will. <laughs> yeah it's true but most of the uh, you're lucky the, I'm not showing your face on this Dutch for <laughs> very specific reasons and because the East Indies Company which was owned by the Dutch government which in turn was owned by um, by 17 stockholders uh, gave the too late um, <laughs> gave the um, the Dutch East Indies Company permission to uh, basically do what they wanted with the power of the Dutch government because. They couldn't communicate. They didn't have good enough um, communication. They didn't, you know, have <laughs> speedy enough communication. Yeah, they had like six, six months, months year. delay. Exactly. No, exactly. They so didn't have the yeah, yeah, one year. Well, one year to get some. To, yeah, I heard it like on an extra Indonesia. credits. History and so, video. in one year, they managed to take over Indonesia because the Indonesians were unprepared for attack, and they just kind of sailed in and said we're taking over, and they did. And this led to a lot of hardship for Indonesia, and that's actually very similar to what the English did. So. What you're saying, this is kind of a nitpick here, but you're saying that the Dutch and the English in your timeline are interchangeable, but they are very similar. I mean, I'm not own. saying they're interchangeable. There are a lot of like different aspects about them, but like to say, to say like different aspects, like a good comparison, I'm saying it would be the Dutch and the English. All right, fine. Yeah. Continue. All right. Moving on. Moving on. So um, a lot of these boring. Chinese named provinces, they flock to the south, and Sutran, of course, flock to the south because they're, they're a special star. And, um, anyways, the bourgeoisie government of the First Republic had ties with foreign capitalists and brought in several foreign powers. And uh, since the foreign powers had investments in Chinese property, of course. And although, like, it was kind of like, do you remember, it was kind of reminiscent of Mao Zedong's, like, guerrilla war against nationalists. So even though the socialist and nationalist factions were like outnumbered and um, out-equipped and um, all these other factors, <coughs> they eventually beat them through quote-unquote persistence. And so, um, yeah, they won two crucial battles at Xi'an and Zhengzhou, which um, we can go back to the map here. <coughs> we have time for this? What? Mm -hmm. Keep going. 52. Yes, this one. So, right here, I I lined it up carefully for you guys. Xi'an, right here, they won a battle here, right, which routed Republican forces to Zhenzhou. And while they are on the route, foreign forces from um, the Dutch specifically moved into Zhenzhou, right? And then they made a last stand right here in which Basically, one of the flanks of the Dutch army and the Republican forces on this side collapsed, and they were able to route the forces all the way back to um, Nanjing. Nanjing. Um, I have a question. What are the Russians doing right now? They are they're up there. I'm sure sure up there. Yes. What's the Tsar um, doing? What's the Tsar? Eating food. <laughs> well, <laughs> being bourgeoisie. <laughs> um. Well, basically, what happened to Russia? was um, Russia was actually kind of interesting in the north because, okay, just ignore this part. This part is all owned by Korea because, um, okay. through various reasons. Through various, I don't want to explain it because I'm lazy. Anyways, and this part is owned by Mongoli, like the Mongolic Confederation, right? Wait, okay. so the Mongols came back. So. <laughs> yeah, the Mongols. Yeah. They're, they're an independent nation because they were part one of like the one of the nine empires that revolted. So that's why it's called the Nine Empires Rebellion, technically. And this is the 
Kashgaria, where it's like the Muslim majority, um, Central Asian peoples. So do we need and then to ask the other nine in the park? Russia was interesting because they took like this part, but they stopped here because it would impede into Korean Siberian territory. And Why so, would they do that? Because Russia. Why would they do that? Because respect. But, the yeah, because you go over at that time, they were owned by Japan. And they didn't care. Let him explain, child! <laughs> it's alternate history. <laughs> they actually had several wars with Korea, but they but Russia just lost all of them because Korea was like better. They have the Korea. cannons. Yeah, and they were just like located closer, right? And like there are a bunch of reasons why Korea won those wars, but Russia couldn't expand. But luckily, after the Nine Empires Rebellion, one of the empires was Siberia, which um covered like this part. It wasn't that populated, no one cared about it. But Russia like basically took control in its sphere of influence and they basically gained a bunch of Pacific ports over there. And then basically like they had this little tension with Korea and Russia for a while, um, trying to gain over like the Pacific ports. So anyways, that's a different story. But yeah, moving back to the Civil War, one, two big battles here, won the war, easy game, easy life. Just go to the slide six thing and then choose your slide. Oh. We were on first try, yeah, that one. Here we go. Oh, that's useful. Yeah, um, this war was also immense. Okay, yes, Bill. We have less than one minute. Okay. And what? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs>